Mike's Daily Podcast. Ep- 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 episode 1344. 1344. I am Mike Matthews broadcasting from Cafe Anyway, located somewhere in Podcastro Valley, Mont, the last place on earth. Today, Benita, the disgruntled fiddle player, the brewmaster, I'm so happy to tell you that we now have finally reached 129 fans of the Facebook page. Mike's Daily Podcast. Facebook.com slash Mike's Daily Podcast. Oh my gosh. It jumped to 129 today. Oh wait, it went back. Mike's Daily Podcast. It looks like it went back down to 128 but it's the morning time i ate some cereal and that's great i don't care how many people listen to this show i just hope you have a wonderful day though oh my rhyming machine is so tired today on this wednesday mike's daily podcast but i am going to give you a podcast because there's so much to talk about today and i was corrected on a thing i talked about yesterday when i said forget about it i apparently offended everyone on the east coast and i apologize i should never ever ever say forget about it because it's it's not for a californian to say i am not italian i am not californian I don't have that sort of Robert De Niro-esque, Joe Pesci-esque thing about me. I got nothing going on. Look who just walked in. Hi, Mark. It's Benita the Rodeo Queen. How y'all doing? It's just going to fiddle player tell you what. What? My wife's voice annoys me sometimes. How dare you say that? I love you. I love you more. You too, canoodling. Is that the same as what Trump did with the Russians, allegedly? Canoodled with the Russians? Oh, it's colluded. I get this, so it's all optics, my friend. Look who else walked in. Oh, my God, make the delicious root beer. I'm the brewmaster. Oh, boy. It's a fan of uh, Cafe Anyway here at the last place on earth. Uh, apparently likes the way you sound, Brewmaster. Ah, awesome! Yeah. Aren't you going to pour some root beer? Oh, wonderful. Yay! I appreciate that. We all need a root beer. And here's today's podcast picture. Even our former president, which we still call president. Isn't that interesting when a president even is, you don't say ex-president, you say president. Who's the oldest one stuck? Carter. He's still around as of this recording. And you can say President Carter still, even though he hasn't been president since 1970. I guess it was into 1980, early 1980 that he was president. And then Reagan took over. I remember that day very well. I have a podcast picture of it today. No, I don't. I have a podcast picture of me. And you can see that I've been around a while. For I have huge crow's feet on my face. All of the crow's feet on my face. They go, caw, caw. And it's no disgrace. Be proud of your wrinkles, my friend. Don't hide them. Don't buy oil of Olay. That stuff is crap. Who knows what they put in that? Oil. Who needs oil in your face? You're not supposed to put it even in your body. So, I am not going to do that. But I am going to tell you today, we are also going to bring you a wonderful segment. Oh, it's a new segment. It's called, I Got Into It. Because we've got a lot of news to get into. And so... I'm going to get into it. I got into it. It's coming up. This morning, Representative... First off, uh, let's... The representative... Was it Representative Tom Tillis? I forget if he's a senator or a representative, but he collapsed. This just happened. Um, 57. I hope he's okay. He was in a D.C. race. They race on Wednesdays, and, and he was racing, and he collapsed. So I hope he's okay. That's scary. Ah, so that was the big news that just happened. Um, meanwhile, and he's from he's from uh, North Carolina, 
And then from South Carolina is Representative Joe Wilson. Okay, he didn't collapse, but he was on C-SPAN today. And he's the you lie guy. He's the one that said to you, Obama, you lie during your first speech to Congress. That's not even funny. I know. And he was on C-SPAN today defending Trump and defending the whole passing of secrets to Russia. Uh, Russia. And uh, he said, that, well, you know what? This is, this is whatever Trump wants to do, he can do. Um, you know what? We should find out who the leak is that let this story out. And this was echoed by Jay Sekulow, who hosts a, a, a national talk show and is a lawyer that helps defend, quote, unquote, Christian conservative rights, unquote, whatever the hell that is. And it's basically whatever he feels like Because the Bible can be interpreted a million ways So thanks a lot, Jay, for that So he defended Trump yesterday Which made me want to, uh, you know Be very, very sick As what Comey was said That he was going to be sick If he heard that the I can't talk quickly now. I'm talking very stuntedly. What's what, what did Comey say? It makes me mildly nauseous to think that we might have had some impact on the election. Mildly nauseous is what I felt when I heard Jay Sekulow. Because he for I've been at this job for two years working for the radio station that carries him. And he has been railing against Obama for years about the whole the Benghazi thing about countless other things that he just makes up and he always is like oh he's unpresidential he can't do this he can't do that uh, we're gonna sign a petition today he always has you try and sign a petition hey sign a petition online and it's basically how he d- why he does that is so he can get your information if you like my Facebook page I don't get any information from that. I think it may show me you on Facebook somewhere, but that I'm like not getting your email address or any of that. That's what you have to do to sign a petition for Jay Sekulow. And he, so he was railing against Obama for the years that I was, I guess it was about a, almost two years worth. And then yesterday happened and he just totally gave Trump a free pass. Well, it was the, the media's fault. Oh, if you're a Trump supporter, that's all you do all day is blame the media. Then just turn off all media and live in a bubble. Live in your cave. Don't get any information from the outside world. Instead of saying the word media, why don't you say the word information? That totally takes all the bias out of it. Or if there is any bias. Why are you so sensitive about these th- you know, you're like, oh, uh, he put the word Trump in his article, so that must mean he hates Trump. So I'm not going to read this article. So everything that guy says is false. I guess what I'm saying is, it's always it's blame the media, and this is how probably the whole campaign will be for the whole Trump administration will be to just say blame the media, blame the media, blame the media. Instead of blame Canada. Does anyone remember that from the Academy Awards? Okay, no. I think I've gone way out here on the edge of nothing. And I'm going to slowly walk back here by saying, come back to you all, for I feel I've lost you. And say, Representative Joe Wilson of South Carolina, the Republican, the ULI guy, was defending Trump, as Jay Sekulow did, saying... It's the media's fault. They shouldn't have leaked the information. Trump can say what he wants. Ah, but Putin. Putin says there wasn't any information leaked. We'll get to that in a moment. But check out Mike'sDailyPodcast.com and the podcast picture, which today is of uh, yours truly. At uh, I Every once in a while, I like to throw a picture of myself in there just to make you mildly nauseous. And it's good optics. Why, why I bring up the word optics is they're saying that a lot with the, with the Trump administration because they don't trust the media at all and the media seems to spin everything out of control apparently, allegedly. 
uh, that, you know, he doesn't want to be seen in any bad light. So it's all about the optics. And, and the optics of the situation, too, as far as him firing Comey. And Comey being fired and finding out that he was fired with a TV screen behind him saying that he was fired. And he's giving a speech, meanwhile, to a bunch of potential recruits to the FBI. Hey, any of you want a job? Uh, well, you might. Sir, up there, behind you, look. What? Oh, no. I've been fired. By Trump, who likes to say you're fired. And I still haven't pulled that drop yet off of YouTube. I should do that because it seemed very pertinent. The point being, as I come back from the edge, from the ledge, and come back to you with good optics, is you can see the me at the wonderful Bishop Ranch Park in San Ramon. This was yesterday. Oh, what a lovely day. It was very overcast, very cold. I felt like I was on the Scottish Highlands or some uh, Ireland, somewhere over there that I've never been. And as the clouds just sweeping over the, uh, the hillsides that are still green in May, still green in the Bay Area, which is odd. I don't remember this for the past eight years I've lived here seeing it green still this late in the year. But there I am. And behind me is a tree that's upside down. And it's interesting because the tree kind of looks like, you know, when you take your hand and you go over to a counter and you make your hand look like a spider and you kind of walk around with your hand. Oh, by the way, I saw a spider on an elevator over the weekend. And I thought to myself, that must be weird for the spider. Constantly feeling the shift of gravity. Can the spider even make a web with this much gravitational Centrifugal force going up and down, up and down all day. So this tree kind of looks like a hand doing that spider thing on the ground. And you can see that at MikeSteelyPodcast.com. That wonderful picture at Bishop Ranch. You should, if you're in the Bay Area, go to Bishop Ranch. First off, if you want to lose some pounds, it's perfect. Because there's a hill that goes straight up. You go up this slope. This crazy slope going straight up. And you do that not too far. It's not like a mile up. You go up a couple of, let's say, flights of stairs. And the next thing you know, you turn around, you've got this beautiful view of the valley there, the San Ramon, Dublin, Pleasanton Valley there. And it's perfect. It's free. Your dog can be off leash because it's East Bay Regional Park District. They have signs that say so, as long as your dog is under vocal command, as Basil is. Is Basil... You hear me? Good. So that's checking that out is a fun thing that you can put on your list. In fact, I talked to a young lady who had just gotten off of work and she said, hey, I didn't want to get stuck on traffic on 680. So I pulled over and I thought I'd take a walk on here. And she had a nice big Castro Valley sweater on. And I said, I'm from there. And she said, cool. And I said, I call it pod Castro Valley. And she said, that's dork. And I said, dork? Okay, sure. And then MikeStillyPodcast.com also has a link to the Amazon. Ah, today we don't have the double Amazon thing. Good. They only need one. By the way, I wanted to say Google Shopping. Before you do Amazon, do Google Shopping as I unplug the plug I just did. Uh, Google Shopping is is great, especially if you mess around with the details and the the, uh, order uh, for example, if you wanted to see, instead of just the, because the, the, you know you got to go around. I haven't done it in a while, but you have to somehow get around the ads that Google tries to shove in there, like Amazon does, and and, and you can kind of extract that information, and then it shows you a bevy of different sites, sites similar to Amazon, but that may be cheaper than Amazon. I had to one die, one die, suddenly I went British, I had to buy one of those things that you stick in your uh, oven to keep it warm. If you've got an electric oven, it's one of these round sort of, uh, like a, it's like a wire that goes round is basically what it is. And you can replace your oven, use, replace that wire using YouTube 
there's your guide. And you stick it in and it works, it's great. And I didn't, suddenly went Scottish and I'm just going all around that land with me tongue. Okay, back to California. So dude, what you do is you stick that thing in your oven's back to normal. And I did not use Amazon, I used some other website that was very helpful. But I found it through Google Shopping. But let's say you're just dedicated to Amazon and maybe you drank the Kool-Aid and bought Amazon Prime. Do all your shopping first through mikesdailypodcast.com. Click on that Amazon icon. There's also, and that helps us out. And there's also a other way to help us out through the PayPal link that you'll see at mikesdailypodcast.com. That everybody's got that. Everybody's putting that on their website these days. PayPal. Shoot, I should have bought stock in PayPal. And you hear about Bitcoin? I don't know how you buy stock in Bitcoin, but Bitcoin apparently is at its highest it's ever been, the value of each coin, because of all the hacking that went on at the end of last week. We'll get more into that as well in just a moment. And all the podcast pictures and past interviews I've done with interesting, interesting people can be found at mikesdailypodcast.com. Okay, and now the segment called... Get through that. I got into it. (laughs) Okay. All right. Let's go. All right. First, I wanted to tell you this. This happened, This story came out a couple days ago, but for the first time, scientists have succeeded in studying the strength of hydrogen bonds in a single molecule using an atomic force microscope. Yes, hydrogen bonds, not bombs, but bonds in a shingle molecule. This is fascinating. This happened at the University of Basel. Did someone say Basel? The name of my dog. Uh, no, this would be Switzerland. The Swiss Nanoscience Institute. Oh, Swiss. That Right. Uh, have reported the results in the journal Science Advances. Hydrogen, the most common element in the universe, and is an integral part of almost all organic compounds. Molecules and sections of macromolecules are connected to one another via hydrogen atoms an interaction known as hydrogen bonding. By the way, Haley, who listens to every show, thank you, Haley, uh, at this point has turned off the podcast. So, bye, Haley. And Haley also won't hear this, but Haley has been telling me day after day after day, Mike, your show just skips right in the middle. To which I told him, nope, you're listening on Google Play, aren't you? And he said, yeah. And I go, Google Play will skip. If it doesn't get a good connection, if all of a sudden your smartphone goes from uh, the 4G or whatever it's on to a Wi-Fi, it will skip in the middle of the podcast. Just so you know, Google Play has got this kind of this weird quirk in it. I've noticed it myself, but I listened to all the shows he talked about and there were no skips at all. So I don't know what he was saying. Anyway, Haley didn't hear that. These interactions, and then he's going to come into work today and go, oh, I heard that. And I'm going to be, oh, these interactions play an important role in nature because they are responsible for specific properties of proteins or, as Carl Sagan used to say, nucleic acids. And, for example, also ensure that water has a high boiling temperature. To date, it has not been possible to conduct a spectroscopic or electron microscopic analysis of hydrogen and the hydrogen bonds in a single molecule. And investigations using atomic force microscopy have also not yielded any clear results. But here we go. And now we've, we've seen it. Yay. More on that article came from Science Daily. This from Google today, I don't know if you've clicked on their Google search thing today. I'm giving Google a bunch of free plugs, but I did think it was interesting that they talked about an antikythera mechanism, an ancient Greek analog computer, an orrery used to predict astronomical positions and eclipses for calendrical and astrological purposes as well as a four year cycle of athletic games well that's fascinating and that's what they have as their icon okay now to something before we get to Putin I just wanted to mention that this weird thing happened a type of bacteria that's resistant to many widely used antibiotics is unusually common among people in Houston 
the superbug known as Klebsilia pneumoniae a pneumonii is particularly prevalent in Houston where there is 6 million people according to scientists finding the otherwise uncommon strain in our city was a very surprising discovery said the study's senior author we urgently need to identify potential vaccine targets or other new treatments and develop new and rapid diagnostic techniques it normally lives in the human intestines where it does not cause any trouble however in other parts of the body and outside the body the bacteria can cause serious infections hospitalized patients are at particularly high risk for serious infections caused by the germ the bacteria can trigger harmful infections such as pneumonia bloodstream or urinary tract infections and meningitis once it moves out of the intestines and into other parts of the body this isn't the first time this year that this has made the news in the U.S. Earlier this year, an elderly Nevada woman died from an infection from this type of bacteria. It was resistant to all 26 antibiotics used in the U.S. For the study, researchers sequenced the genome of more than 1,700 strains of this bacteria. Uh, And... Now, I've heard interesting things about this, that it, this is being caused by the fact that we subscribe or prescribe um, antibiotics to just about everything these days. And now, well, bacteria is getting resistant. Okay, Vladimir Putin said yesterday that Donald Trump has not passed on any secrets to Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov during that meeting in Washington last week, and he can prove it. He spoke at a news conference the Italian Prime Minister was there um, and he quipped that Lavrov was re- remiss for not passing on what he had made clear he believed were non-existent secrets. I spoke to him today, he said, and Putin was smiling when he said this. I'll be forced to issue him with a reprimand because he did not share these secrets with us, not with me, nor with representatives of Russian intelligence services. It was very bad of him. Putin, who said Moscow rated Lavrov's meeting with Trump highly, said Russia was ready to hand a transcript of Trump's meeting with Lavrov over to U.S. lawmakers if that would help reassure them. A Kremlin aide later told reporters that Moscow had in its possession a written record of the conversation, not an audio recording. Complaining about what he said were signs of political schizophrenia in the U.S., Putin said Trump was not allowed to do his job properly. Wow! See? You Trump supporters? Even Putin agrees with you. And it's all the media's fault. Well, uh, four months, President Trump and his senior advisors had planned his first foreign trip with hopes of investigating, investing it with historic grandeur. This is going to be a huge tour. I like to call it the Trump travel band of travelers. Wait, that doesn't sound good. It's a cavalcade. It's a cascade. It's a it's a parade. And he's going to be going all kinds of... He's going to be going to the world's three great monotheistic religions capped by an address to the Muslim world in Saudi Arabia that will serve as Trump's answer to the speech former President Barack Obama gave in Cairo in 2009. His going to Saudi Arabia first is huge. I was listening to... Huge. Listening to... Uh, to the Point... With Warren Olney, and he was saying, he was talking to several people that were experts that were saying Saudi Arabia is all excited about Trump making this the first presidential visit, uh, the first visit of his of the uh, Middle East, and and Saudi Arabia being the first place that he goes. So this should be. Well, this article basically goes on and on and about the whole. Um, thing that we were just talking about with Putin and whatnot. But the this is this article also came out. BBC News was talking about the free the th- uh, three French gay rights groups have accused the Russian Republic of Chechnya of a policy of genocide toward gay people in a complaint filed at the International Criminal Court. They blamed Chechen President Ramzad Kadriov and state officials for a wave of persecution. And they cited the case of a teenage male thrown out of a nine-story window because of his sexuality, allegedly. Chechen officials have denied that gay people even exist in the republic. 
Russian President Vladimir Putin earlier this month backed an inquiry into the reported crackdown on gay people in Chechnya, but the three French groups have rejected Russia's internal investigation and want the International Criminal Court in The Hague to start work before Russia withdraws from its jurisdiction in November. Hackers, hackers, hackers. We've heard so much about hackers. That's been the optics lately. And the shadow brokers hacking crew that took credit for leaking the cyber weapon used in last week's global ransomware attack says it plans a data dump of the month service starting in June. The group says its monthly menu could include anything from web browser tools to compromise data on Russian, Chinese, Iranian, or North Korean missile nuclear and missile programs the shadow brokers is launching new monthly subscription model is being like a wine of the month club they said in a communique released yesterday and it's typically choppy english each month people can be paying membership fee then getting members only data dump each month what members doing with data after is up to members i uh don't what uh mm, they leaked the eternal blue computer exploit in april and microsoft said it had apparently been obtained from nsa stockpiles white house homeland security advisor tom bossert said the code was not a tool developed by the nsa to hold ransom data but did not say whether the exploitable flaw the ransomware was based on came from nsa cyber tools uh codes and finally, about the hacking group, they, uh, well, the hacking group that leaked the bugs that enabled last week's global ransomware attack is threatening to make public even more computer vulnerabilities in the coming weeks, potentially including the compromised network data pertaining to the nuclear or missile programs of China, Iran, North Korea, and Russia, as well as vulnerabilities affecting Windows 10 which is run by millions of computers worldwide. And that was a different article by the Washington Post that was talking about that. Um, They claimed in a blog post yesterday that some of the computer bugs may be released on a monthly basis as part of that subscription model uh, that attempts to mimic what has proved successful for companies such as Spotify, Netflix, Blue Apron, and many more. As we go outside a cafe anyway, we're bringing Mike's Daily Podcast somewhere in Podcaster Valley. I think I got to stop using Google Chrome because it is moving so slow for me, folks. I'm a little out of sorts. The optics are bad on today's show for me to see. But next show will be better. And it'll be Madame Rutabaga, Valentino, and Bison Bentley. Enjoy your day. Mike's Daily Podcast is written and produced and performed by Mike Matthews. His podcast is super easy to find. Download or listen to his show and read his blog at mikesdailypodcast.com. Email Mike now at mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com. See you tomorrow. Bye.